All right, we continue tonight with our series on Christian character. Christian character are things that ought to be in our life that were in the Lord Jesus Christ's life when he was here on earth. And certainly he's our example. We're to follow his steps. And uh, these are important parts of our life. Tonight we're coming to the subject of responsibility. Responsibility. Do you know what that means? Well, once you see it, oh, we got too much light on that. Can't see it very well. Let's turn one off. There we go. There it is. The habit of being reliable and trustworthy in fulfilling obligations and completing required duties. That's really how we could define responsibility, to be reliable in doing what you're supposed to do, reliable in doing what you say you're going to do. That's responsibility, and the Lord certainly wants to see us be responsible. Now, related to this is faithfulness, and we could give us two key verses I put up there. First, uh, James 1, verse number 22 but be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. God says, don't just take the word in, put it to practice. Be responsible. Do what the word says. And then, of course, in 1 Corinthians 4, 2, another key verse it says, Moreover, it's required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Faithfulness and being responsible go hand in hand, so it's required that we do these things. And of course, the great example is our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Was he responsible? Well, let's look at some things said about him from his youth on up. Turn to Luke chapter number 1 and verse number 52. Luke chapter 1 verse 52 talks about his growing up and says, And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature, look at this, and in favor with God and man. To be in favor with God and man, he had to be responsible. He had to be faithful. People watched his life growing up, and he was very responsible in all that he did. What an example for us. Then go to John chapter number 8 and verse number 46. Notice what it says here during his ministry. It says, which of you convinceth me of sin? And I say the truth, why do you not believe me? Who can condemn him of any sin? They couldn't, because Jesus was responsible, was faithful. There was no sin in his life. What an example for us. Go to the book of John, chapter 17, verse number 4. This is Jesus' great earthly prayer. And notice what he tells the Father here in his prayer. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Jesus was responsible. He finished all the work he came into this world to do given to him by his father. So he was responsible. And we could go to one more verse in Revelation and notice what it says concerning him here in Revelation chapter 1, verse number 5. Scripture says, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth. Notice, faithful witness. He came to give witness of God. He was faithful. He was responsible and carried that out while he was here on earth. So, the Lord Jesus was responsible. He expects us to be responsible people. Responsible in what? Well, if you're going to be responsible, it's got to start in your mind. So go to Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 8. Here's a verse that tells us how to think. In Philippians 4 and verse number 8, it tells us, Finally, brethren, what sort of things are true? What sort of things are honest? What sort of things are just? What sort of things are pure? What sort of things are lovely? What sort of things of good report? If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. So our mind has got to be right to begin with. It's got to be responsible enough 
to think on the things God wants us to think on so then we can act upon them and be responsible with our actions. And God tells us here how we ought to use our minds, the type of things we ought to think about. Well, also, of course, I should have maybe given this verse first, but in Romans 12, 1, you know what this verse has to say. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. We ought to be responsible enough as God's people to say, Lord, here's my life. Whatever you want to do with it, I'm willing. I'm willing to obey you. I'm willing to follow you. That is being responsible with your life. And that's what God wants us to do. More or less starts there. Well, let's go over and see some more verses now that tell us of things we ought to be responsible about. Go to 1 Thessalonians chapter number 2 and verse number 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse number 4 says this. But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel... Even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God which trieth our hearts. Notice what Paul says he was entrusted with here. He's put in trust with the gospel. What's that mean? God told him he was to take the gospel and preach it to other people. Now, does God say that to us too? Mark 16, 15 is for all of us. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. God wants us to be witnesses for him. We're supposed to let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify the Father in heaven. That's Matthew 5, 16. Are we responsible to be the witness both in our life and in our word that we should be? God's looking for responsible people to be a witness for him. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. We know this verse. I've used it numbers of times here in the pulpit. It says there, whether you, therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Everything we do, it ought to be our desire to glorify God, to honor him, to exalt him, to please him, in all of our life. Are we responsible to do that? Are we responsible to check everything out, whether we eat or drink, or whatever we're doing? Does God approve of this? Is it pleasing to him? That's a responsible Christian who wants to glorify God in all that they do. Let's go on from there and notice some more things that the Bible tells us we ought to be responsible about. Turn to Hebrews chapter number 13 and verse number 17. Hebrews 13, 17. Obey them that have the rule over you, and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that's unprofitable for you. Obeying people who are over us, our rulers, our bosses, people that have the rule over us, we should obey them. Are we responsible to do that? Or do we look for ways to get out of doing what they tell us to do? We ought to be responsible in our obedience to those who are over us. Go to 2 Timothy chapter number 2. And let's look at verse number 3. Something that some people sometimes overlook in our Christian life. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Does anybody like to endure hardness? It's not pleasant to have hardness come along. But God tells us we are soldiers in his army. Soldiers have to endure a lot of hardness sometimes. I mean, uh, I'm not a fan of watching any war movies, but many, many years ago I saw a few, and when you see men having to chomp through the jungles and try to, you know, make their way through swamps and hot and uh, diseases and to fight then the enemies. What an awful thing to have to go through. A lot of hardness is involved in being in the military, especially in wartime. So that's what the 
picture is here. We're soldiers of Jesus Christ, and whatever hardness comes along, we should endure it, keep going for him, regardless of that hardness. Are we responsible in that? Well, go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and notice verse number 17 and 18. Pray without ceasing. Remember these verses we learned? There's a command. Pray without ceasing. Are we responsible in doing that? Of course, there's two ideas with praying without ceasing. One is people say to be in the attitude of prayer all the time. And we ought to be. You know, a good practice to really pray for other people is to, number one, when somebody tells you a problem they have or something they need to be prayed for, just pause right then in your own mind. You don't have to words pray. You don't have to speak words to pray. Prayer can come from your heart, your mind. Just say to the Lord, meet this need, you know. Pray right then and there. Good way not to forget it. I try to practice that, don't always, when people tell me something in the hallway. When people tell me something in the hallway and I'm shaking hands, I might get two or three, four or five things said to me. Unless I stop and write them down, which then I miss shaking hands with people to stop and write it down, it's hard to remember them all. So I try to write then and there, pray for it. Then I try to remember as many as I can and write them down and pray for them later. But it's a good practice to get into. We can be in the attitude of prayer all the time and should be. Be responsible to pray. The other thought here is don't stop praying for something. Don't stop praying till the answer comes. God has an answer, and it may be a month down the road, maybe a year down the road, maybe years down the road. But don't quit. Keep praying. Be responsible and keep praying for that need. Then look at verse 18. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Here we're told to give thanks. Are we responsible enough to give thanks for everything? Think it's a good habit to get into to bow your head and thank God before you eat any meal, whether it be breakfast or lunch or dinner. Uh, I know sometimes people eat on the go when they're eating their lunch, but you can still pause and thank the Lord for your food before you eat. Give thanks in everything. We ought to be a very thankful people for all the Lord has done. Are we responsible in that way? Well, back in Romans chapter 12, 2, uh, we read 12, 1, but in 12, 2, it says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Are we being conformed to this world? Or are we being transformed out of this world? Where are we in our life for the Lord? Another good question to be responsible. Boy, Ephesians 5, 16 has a good one. Turn to Ephesians chapter number 5. And verse number 16, I preach this at our children in school all the time. They have study halls. Study hall is supposed to be for study. What do they like to use it for? Blah, 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 blah. Playing games, anything but study gets to me. So I'll give them this verse. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Use your time wisely. Now that doesn't mean that every minute you got to be working and doing something. Certainly there's a place for rest and relaxation. Jesus himself came apart to a desert place to rest, the Bible says. There has to be some rest time for us. But basically... How are we using our days? How are we using our time? Uh, could we be using it in a better way? Be responsible with it? God gives us just so many minutes of this life. Now, they're up in the millions, but he gives us just so many minutes. From the beginning, you breathe your first breath till you breathe your last. What we do with all that time, God says you should redeem it. You need to use it for me. Use it wisely. And so we ought to think about that. Are we responsible in how we use our time or waste a lot of time? Well, here's some in the Old Testament that I don't have all these listed up here, I don't think. I've got some more to give you. 
Go to Joshua chapter number 1 and verse number 8. Joshua was the leader of Israel, of course, after Moses. He was the one that God used to bring him into the promised land and to conquer it for Israel. God prepared him for that and said these words to him in Joshua 1.8, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that's written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, then thou shalt have good success. So there's a good question. Do we meditate in God's word day and night like he told Joshua? Do we think about it? Do we appropriate it in our life? I'm so thankful sometimes when some of our people come up to me and they'll say, Pastor, look at this verse I found this week. It meant so much to me. What a blessed verse it is. And so, you know, it blesses my heart too to see they've dug something out of the Word that has really been a blessing to them in that particular week. There's a man in this church that gives me long lists of verses. That means a lot to him quite often. And I'm blessed by that. So are we meditating in the Word? Are we responsible to use God's Word? Here's another one in the Old Testament, which is repeated in the New Testament by Jesus, Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 5. This was given to the children of Israel, but Jesus said it's for all of us. Here it says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. Where is that recorded in the New Testament? Anybody know? Matthew twenty two thirty seven. 37. Jesus was asked the greatest commandment. He says, the greatest commandment is this, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul. In the New Testament, he says, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment with promise. So are we responsible to love the Lord like we should? And let me ask you this, how do you love the Lord? How do you love the Lord? Right there, Jesus said in John 14, 15, if ye love me, keep my commandments. That's how we show our love to the Lord. Are we doing that? Well, here's another one that's really good, and sometimes this is kind of hard for people to want to do. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse number 13. Proverbs 4 and verse number 13. Look what it has to say here to us. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go Keep her, for she is thy life. Do you like people to instruct you? Some of us don't like people to try to tell us what to do. We'd rather figure it out on our own. But here, a wise person is going to be someone that's willing to take instruction. And certainly, we all have things we can learn. We ought to be a willing learner. So that's a good one there. Are we responsible to take instruction from others? Here's a good one, 1 Corinthians 9, 27. Back in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul gives us this verse. He was so concerned about this himself. He says, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. What's he saying? I have to make sure I use self-discipline, that I use self-control, keep myself under control. Literally there where he says, I keep under my body, in the Greek it means he beats his body. Now, he didn't literally, I'm sure, punch himself in the face and stomach and so on. But really, you have to fight yourself to keep it under subjection. Do you know that? Old self likes to be lazy, or old self likes to have its way, or old self likes to win an argument, or old self likes to say, that's not right, you're doing it the wrong way, do it this way. You know, you've got to watch out for self. Temper's a problem for, for self. We've got to have self-control. We just, uh, I heard today, someone came and said, what do I do about this person because they got so mad in my presence that they took a, a metal ruler and threw it against the wall and struck the wall. They were just out of control. 
I said, well, they've got to be disciplined for that because that is just wrong. We're not going to have that at all. They lost their temper. They had to be dealt with. They've got to learn self-control. But how are we doing with that? Are we responsible, keeping ourselves under control? Paul was concerned he'd be a castaway that God wouldn't use him anymore. If he didn't keep himself under control, God would not use him anymore. So we ought to consider that ourselves. Well, Psalm 101, verse 3, going back to the Old Testament. A few more verses here we'll look at this evening. Psalm 101, verse number 3, we're talking about responsibility. All these things we need to be responsible about. In 101, 3, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. What do we watch with our eyes? Certainly the old devil likes to feast our eyes, which go to our minds and our heart, with evil things to try to get us to think about those evil things and, uh, you know, do them. It's always interesting, especially years ago, you know, in our school. I remember this one particularly. Kids watch TV, you know. They watch a lot of TV. They like to act it out. So we had this problem years ago in the elementary school. Went to the playground, kids are kicking one another. I said, why are you kicking one another? You don't kick one another in school. We're Ninja Turtles. Where did you see Ninja Turtles? On television. We want to be like Ninja Turtles. Don't tell me television doesn't have an effect on people. It has an effect, great effect on children. They see things on there, styles of dress, attitudes people have. They see how people talk and want to use those kind of words. I hear words sometimes I never heard in my life spoken in school. Where did you hear that word? Oh, well, it was in so-and-so movie. They pick up with those things, and there they go with them, see? And uh, we've got to watch out for that. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. How responsible are we with that one? Well, let's go also and notice, if you will, 1 John 4, 7. Maybe you know this verse, important one on love once again. In 1 John 4, and verse number 7. And of course, I know we're jumping around tonight. We could go to an awful lot of things, actually, in Scripture. We're just giving you an idea of things to be responsible for. But in 1 John 4, and verse number 7, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. How are we doing on loving one another? How do you show love one for another? Well, number one, I'd start by talking with one another. You know, don't just always rush in and rush out of church. Take some time to meet people here and talk to them. Uh, sometimes people say, uh, who's that person that sat down front? Oh, that's one of our members. And they've never met him or talked to him. You know, that's sad. We ought to know one another and love one another. But then loving one another means, well, what can I pray for for you? Uh, maybe we can get together, have a sandwich, talk about things. Maybe we can do this. You know, that's loving one another. And that's something that the Lord wants us to do. How responsible are we with that? Uh, 2 Timothy 2 and verse number 15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We mentioned Joshua 1, 8, which says we ought to meditate in the word of God. This verse says we ought to study it. How do you study God's word? Well, it's more than just reading. Have you ever had to take a test in school? If you just read a chapter and stop, what kind of grade do you think you'll get? Now, you might have a photograph mind. I've known a few people that could just read something and basically have it all one time through. But that's not most of it. It's not me. How do you really study something so you're ready for a test or quiz? You go back over it after you've read it, pick out the important things that are there. People, places, events that happened. 
pick that out of what you read. Make sure you know them so that you're ready for a test and quiz. Same thing with God's Word. If you just read it, and sometimes, you know, give yourself a test. If you read two or three chapters at a time, give yourself a test. What did these chapters say after you're done reading them? What was in them? Boy, I'll tell you, sometimes you'll be hard-pressed. You were sleepy, you read the scriptures, and your mind wandered to something else, even though your eyes are still going over the verses. Uh, these kind of things can happen, but we need to go back and be sure we're really studying and understanding what is being said. It's very important to do that. Are we responsible with that? Well, we could go to Malachi 3.10. We need to give our tithes and offerings to the Lord. Are we being responsible to do that? Acts 24, 16. I'm just finishing some up real fast. We ought to be very careful to guard our conscience. What's your conscience? That sense of right and wrong in you. The Bible talks about the fact it can be seared. It can become a bad conscience. And I always remember the missionary that went to New Guinea. Remember that story, the pineapple story? Years ago, I showed it here. But people in that place he went felt it was all right to steal. And they were always taking things. He saw a lady wearing his, baby, uh, his baby's diaper pins in her ear for earrings. Had got a hold of them and took off with them. The pineapple story is they kept stealing his pineapples. And he got mad at the natives and said, stop stealing my pineapples. And, you know, he, they said, why do you get so mad, missionary? You're not supposed to be a mad missionary. You should be mad. They're stealing my pineapples. They thought it was okay. See, their consciences were seared to that particular thing until, of course, they'd get saved and realize that that's not the way you're supposed to live. But he had quite a time there. I always remember that story. Well, we got to guard our consciences or... They can become seared and not be any good. Well, let's go to our personal evaluation tonight and see how you do with these questions which have to do with being responsible, responsible Christians. Here we go. Some of these things are in the verses. I am careful to use my time wisely. We went over that one. How would we check that one, yes or no? I am careful to do things without having to be reminded all the time. You know, you got to work on not forgetting. To me, it's amazing that 14-year-olds have such bad minds anymore. I forgot my work. I forgot my book. I forgot what you said. I forgot, I forgot that rule, a rule they've known for years. I forgot that rule. Now, how in the world does that happen? Well, it's not being responsible. We are to be responsible to try to remember things we're supposed to remember. Are we responsible to get our work done on time? Maybe we have a deadline. Are we responsible to get something done by the time it should be done? I'm responsible to give out the word of God or witness when I have the opportunity. I've accepted the responsibility for my own sin. I own up to it, repent of it to get it out of my life. We do that. You know, sins are not always sins of commission or where the Bible says don't do this, don't do this. Some are sins we fail to do things that God, that God says we should do. James 4, 17, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. So we better check up on those things too and make sure our hearts are right with the Lord. Are we responsible about that? I found out what talents the Lord has given me and faithfully used them for him. Are we responsible to use our talents? I'm responsible to have daily personal devotions with the Lord. How are we doing with that one? I'm responsible for my eyes. We mentioned this already. Looking at things that would bring glory to God and would please Him. How about this one? 
I'm responsible to help other Christians when I see they have a sin problem. There's a verse for that, 1 Thessalonians 5, 14. You know, you might see a problem somebody has. You say, I'm not going to bother them. And it's between them and God. Well, if they're doing something that's wrong, it'd be the right thing of love for them to try to point it out to them in a loving way, not a condemning way. But, you know, go into them and say, I notice that you're doing this. And do you know what the Bible says? Uh, really and truly, we need to overcome that type of thing, you know, in our life. I know it's hard to do, but God wants us to be concerned for others and how they're living. I'm responsible with my money. We mentioned this already, giving back to God the proper amount that he says I should. I'm responsible to getting places on time and arriving home on time. <laughs> That's a good one for some people. You know, some people are habitually late. They just have a hard time getting places on time. But really, that goes back to redeeming time, doesn't it? We ought to try to be places on time as much as possible. I accept responsibility for others who are younger than me in the Lord and try to help them grow in the Lord by encouraging them. Do an encouraging of younger Christians. You know, if we've been saved 20, 30, 40 years and know a lot about the Lord all that time, we ought to be able to help some that are rather young in the faith. We ought to be responsible to try to do that. I'm responsible to faithfully pray for others whom the Lord has given me uh, in my life. Praying for others. I'm responsible in keeping a good reputation for my family through my attitudes, my work ethic, and my behavior. That's a good one. Watching our reputation. Reputation is what people think of you. Your character is what you really are. We're talking about character traits of Christians. This is what we really should be, is what we're studying. But our reputation is what people think of us. They see us on the outside and form a reputation of what we're like. Now, it might be interesting sometime, and of course it'd be so embarrassing, wouldn't it? If we passed out papers and we said, we'd like down what you think of so-and-so and just see what responses. You know, we could collect them all and give them just to that person. And maybe that would help us with well, what people think about me, you know. They talk too much. They just seem to be so reserved. That they don't seem to really want to talk to people. You know, might be some of the responses we would get and might be good for us to wake up. But we ought to be responsible to be concerned about the reputation we have, what people are thinking about us. I'm responsible to keep my mind and my body Pure. That's a good one. We talked about purity in one, uh, last week's lesson. Certainly we ought to be responsible to try to be pure in thought, word, and deed. All areas God's watching. We ought to be responsible. Well, these are just a few things. Um, what kind of grade would you get on them? A, B, C, D. Personal evaluation. Important thing, aren't you thankful God's responsible to us? Everything he says that he's going to do for us, he does. He does it just at the right time, the proper way. God does everything perfectly. He's God. Now, we won't be like that, but my, when he's that way towards us, we ought to say, I want to be a person of responsibility and the things that God gives to me, I want to be responsible with them. Think about that one tonight. All right, we'll close in a word of prayer. Lord willing, if I'm feeling okay, we're going to be leaving town and be gone for a week. Pray for Pastor Tyson preaching this Lord's Day, Sunday morning, Sunday night, and trust the Lord will use him here. Uh, we may be here if I can't leave, but nonetheless, he'll be preaching, so pray for him on this Lord's Day. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time together. I pray, Lord, that we would learn the importance of responsibility and certainly all the things we need to be doing towards you.
we ought to work on very hard to be responsible. Things we do to others, we ought to work on hard too. Responsibility is a big part of being a dedicated Christian for you. Speak to our hearts on this subject tonight and bless us as we go from here. Give us a good remainder to this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You're dismissed. God bless you.